We're going to continue our teachings on how to turn hopeless situations around and to make them situations of hope. Nambikaitra Sul Nilagalai, Eppidi Nambikaitra Sul Nilayaga, Naam Maatralaam Enbadai Kuritthi, Naam Thodandhi Parkku Pogurum. I made a very important statement from the life of King Hezekiah in chapter 38 of Isaiah's book, Esaiah, Muppathi Ettaud Adhikaram. Esaikya Raja Vin Valkai Lendu Oru Kariyatthai, Kuritthi Naan Unglodu Kuda Pagrindu Kondain. என்ன ஏசையா தீர்க்கதரிசி எசைக்க ராஜாவின் சிறை இருப்பை மாற்றுவதற்கு அவனுக்கு அந்த அதிகாரம் இல்லாமல் இருந்தது தன்னுடைய சூழ்நிலையை மாற்ற வேண்டும் சிறை இருப்பை மாற்ற வேண்டும் என்று நினைத்து சுவர் புறமாக திரும்பி ஜபித்த எசைக்க ராஜா மாத்திரம்தான் அவன் சூழ்நிலையை மாற்ற முடிந்தது என்று நாம் பார்க்கிறோம் யூ காட் டு கெட் திஸ் ரைட் பிளீஸ் ஆஃபன் வி ஹாவ் இட் ஆல் மிஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் வி பிலீவ் தட் மேன் வில் டூ இட் ஆர் திஸ் உமன் வில் டூ இட் ஆர் திஸ் பர்சன் கேன் சம் ஹவு டர்ன் தி டைட் அண்ட் எஸ் தேர் ஆர் டைம்ஸ் வென் யுவர் ஃபெய்த் எஸ் நாட் இட் கம் டு அ பிளேஸ் ஆஃப் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அண்ட் காட் இன் இஸ் மர்சி ஹெல்ப்ஸ் யூ பி கேரிட் ஆன் தி ஃபெய்த் ஆஃப் சம் ஒன் எல்ஸ் But if you really want to turn hopeless situations around, you must come to a place where your face is turned towards the wall. Can I have an amen please? Your face. We often think King Hezekiah must have asked Isaiah to pray for him. He didn't. In fact, Isaiah's word to him was so clear and plain. Get your house in order. You are going to die shortly. Was God confused in his communication? No. God always wanted King Hezekiah to live. But given the kind of slackness in Hezekiah's life about sickness, God wanted him to know that he was going to die. Going on in the same mindset, God wanted him to know he was going to die. If you study the life of King Hezekiah, Hezekiah saw a lot of supernatural things happen in his lifetime. Say that Raja, when you see the park in the park, he can see the same things in the park in the park. Let's see what we can see in the park in the park. If we can see the park in the park, we can see the same things in the park in the park. We can see the same. Hezekiah didn't make any attempts to come before God with a sickness that had attacked his body. That's why we are studying this again this evening. Most people look in arrogance and say, well, God knows what I'm going through. My friend, God knows everything. You don't have to tell someone God knows. God knows everything. But the question is, what have you done about your need? What have you done about your desire? What have you done ab- about your want? What have you done about your problem? Have you come to Him? Hezekiah was shaken by the words of Isaiah and he did the unthinkable. He did not set his house in order. He set his prayer life in order. Why don't you see what Hezekiah did and do it as well? Most don't. Sometimes people are plain lazy when it comes to prayer. Some of them are plain arrogant when it comes to prayer. They don't want to pray. They assume that prayer is for someone else, not for them. For them, they can get by with two or three minutes of prayer. They don't have to spend time with God. But the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. If you want to see miracles happen in your life, 
find out in the last six months, listen carefully, how much of time you have spent with your God. In the last six months, how much of time you have set apart to spend with Him, to fellowship with Him, to wait upon His presence, to humble yourself, and to say, God, your will, not mine, be done. How much of time have you spent? Do you know something? Some will be so fast to set their house in order. They find that easier than to wait upon God. Than to turn their face to the wall. Sure, turning your face to the wall is an effort. But it's an effort that brought 15 years of blessing in his life. 15 more years of blessing into his life. Sur Puramaga Tirupi Jebikum in the Raja Vaka Vanda the Enne Padena in the Varadangal Asirvadatin Varadangalage Katter Amanaki mean them Kodutan in the Nam Parkro. Thunder a Vite. Amen. Orunga Padita Ville Marage, then a day Jebba Valkae of an Orunga Padatina. There are people who get offended when we speak this word. They get really offended. This morning has met somebody. We had prayed for that person, the person had got a job. All of a sudden after he went for the first month of work, didn't turn up for a morning service. I asked someone else, where is he? Too tired. I said, really? Did he work last night? No, he last worked on Friday. I laugh in my heart. Do you know why? They are thinking they are giving me an explanation. They don't know when all hell breaks loose. You can't give an explanation like that to the devil. He will wreck a person's life who has no prayer. Now when affluence has come, all of a sudden the person is tired. Worked last on Friday. Isn't it offensive to even listen to that nonsense? Some people look at you offended. They look at me and say, what do you mean? Do you know how much I earn per day? What does it matter? How much you earn per day? You are ready to take one day off just to attend some function. You don't want to take one day off to spend with a God who made all things possible in your life. Who are you fooling? God or man? You want to grow up? This is the way to grow up. It's a sobering truth. You're not kindergarten kids sucking your thumb. You've got to grow up in your spiritual life. How do you grow up in your spiritual life? By spending time with God. Or else you won't grow up. You will be stunted. You will see others growing up. Hezekiah set his prayer life right. He had never come before God with a sickness. He had never even considered as a covenant man he had a right to ask God for healing. Till Isaiah's word to him shook him out of his stupor. To many in the church, this is exactly their life story. Some doctor looks at them and comes out with a verdict. This and this is wrong with you. Immediately it is a shake-up. I mean it's like a slap on the face. Why wait for the doctor to bring you out of your stupor? 
every day why can't you honor the one who needs to be honored why don't you come before him with joy in your heart remember the bible says they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength I'm not joking. If I don't do it, what do I have to talk to you about this evening? I might as well close the Bible and sit along with you and we'll get somebody else who has a word from the Lord to speak to us. We need to hear from God. Amen. Because all of you are here with some definite problem or some situation in your life that you are hungry to see God at work in. You want an answer for that need. Most often it's like you're finished. You're finished if you don't spend time with him. Today someone came in who had another need, unusual need. Very lucrative job. Only thing, the condition of work is a very different condition of work. The person is very indisciplined. This will hype the indiscipline in the person's life. I just ask the person a question. Are you disciplined? She said, no. I said, forget about the job. The job's not for you. She said, I nearly threw in my papers. I said, you better don't throw anything in before you know it's over. How stupid can people get? The devil is a wicked devil. He never plays by the rule book. He is always hitting below the belt. And the best way to do it is now by dangling the golden apple before people's eyes. Get them to get into the work mode. Get them to become so busy. No time for God. No time for prayer. No time to listen to the word. No time for worship and praise. Some will even look at you and tongue in cheek say it's a rat race, pastor. The question, who's the rat and who's the cat? Who are you running from? They'll tell you that straight. It's a rat race, pastor. Everybody is out to get me. Someone said it like this. He said, being in ministry is like being in a big basket filled with crabs. The moment you try to put your head up, one other crab pulls you down. <laughs> you can't really do ministry. My friends, you can do ministry. Because the one who can overturn the entire basket is your friend, your Lord, your master. He is not a crab. You may go down under because of people. But then a day comes when he says, no, enough is enough. And he turns the basket up, right side up. And all of a sudden you're on the top. The other crabs are down. It's time you got your act together. And the act that you need to get together is the act of prayer, my friends. Turning your face to the wall. Put your face where it rightfully belongs. Facing the one from whom answers can come. Most don't do it. Sometimes people after being long time in the church assume. You know I've been 20 years in the faith. I can somehow sit down in my prayer life. No you don't sit down in your prayer life. If you claim you're 20 years in the faith. You better have a prayer life that matches the 20 years. You've been in the faith. And you'll find a lot of wrong examples in the church. Again I'm telling you. You will find a lot of wrong examples in the church. Don't follow them. Follow the right examples. The wrong example was an unprayerful Hezekiah who would have died of sickness. The right example is the prayerful King Hezekiah who got an answer come his way. Can I have an amen please? It's up to you. It's up to you. Jabba Walke Seriana Vidatale. Ningal Tirupi Virgil and Ral Marubudim Sur Puramaga Tirupi Kartare Ye Parte Avaranda Ilende Badale Petrukul Makalag Irupi Irgil and Ral Asidwa the Mungla Nokivaru 
Don't assume it's going to be easy. And let me tell you something. When you walk with the Lord, it's one of the most pleasurable of times. I didn't start off that way. But I found that sometimes prayer is amazingly pleasurable. Unable to explain it. There are times when I'll be sitting at the dining table and I know he's standing there. I can sense him standing there. I don't know how to explain this to you because I don't want it to be an irreverent way of talking. Where it looks so simple. But I know he's standing there. I know I'm not alone in the house. There's someone standing by my side who's leading me to the word. Sometimes it's so unnerving because you know it's not an unclean spirit. There is no fear of the unclean kind grabbing a hold of you. Instead you know there is somebody so real watching over you my friend. How do you explain this to anybody? How do you go and talk this to anybody? You've got to come to that place where you can call him friend. And walk with him. And talk to him. And he talks back to you. And you find the victory in your soul every day. I mean this is not the preserve of just a few people in the church. It is for every believer my friends. One of the most amazing things that I found out about Enoch. Was that he walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. What surprised me was Enoch was a family man. He had a host of children. He was not sitting in some hermit her, monastery as a hermit. He had not cut himself off from people. He was a very, very ordinary man. But this man walked with God every day. Till one day God said, I can't do without you. Come with me. Someone asked a Sunday school child, can you tell me something about Enoch? Child stood up and said, it's the man who went for a walk with God and forgot to come back. You walk with God. You talk to him. He'll talk back to you. I mean, you're not worshipping a pillar. There are times it looks like no answer is forthcoming. But when he comes through, you will see that the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob is no theory. He is a reality. Hallelujah. We are going to close this evening with prayer. Then I want you to know that hopeless situations are hopeless for people who have never seen the God of hope. But it is never hopeless for the ones who see the God of hope every day. It's unnerving. It's really unnerving. You're not expecting him to be there. And then he is there. And he's making it possible for you to know he's there. In the natural, you cannot know it. I mean, sometimes I'm just sitting there, then the dining table, I've been thinking about something, and all of a sudden, I know that there is someone else in the room. It's not always, but sometimes it happens. And God wants me to know it. That's what's making me, you know, feel more humbled. If I came to know if it is something. Instead, he's wanting me to know I'm there. I'm with you. I'm standing with you there. That's the God you serve, my friends. So when you talk about turning your face to the wall, it's not setting your house in order to die. It's setting your prayer life in order that you may live. Can I have an amen, please? Let's rise up to our feet this evening and we'll close with prayer.